We'll come back, everybody. Starting the beginning of chapter seven from the practice of statistics, which is CED number five from the College Board. I'm Mr. Hayes. I teach statistics, and I'm going through the Statsmedics curriculum that you can find at statsmedics.com. I've got a copy of my notes down below. There's a link, um, and I hope you find something helpful. Obviously, comment, like, subscribe as we go, and let's get into it. Yesterday, or actually in the previous video, we talked about a very small sample, or actually a very small population. It was a class with four, in theory, um, chapter six tests. Today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a bigger actual sample. And um, unfortunately, when I did this last year, for whatever reason, I didn't have all the tests graded by that. I know I'm an awful teacher. Um, so I had, and I also made sure that we had enough for like two class worths of data. So with that said, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what we did last year in terms of the data, and we're going to get a little bit more specific with what's going. So um, what we ended up doing is we took a very small class of students population. In reality, there were many students who took the test. And so what I ended up doing is I put on my board this. And I said, okay, here are 70 scores. And I did 70 because it's going to be easy to count. I've got seven rows of 10. And I said, pick a random sample of five, find the average. And every student did that four times. And then they put their answer up on front on a dry erase board, which if you heard me yesterday, about reasons to take um, Lindsay and uh, Luke's um, pop-up class, if you are a stats teacher, you know, it, it, I thought, hey, I could just save it here electronically. It actually does work that those little stickers work a lot better. But that's a side note. Anyway, um, so they went through and they did this. So again, you'd randomly go through and pick this. But you display your data and obviously don't put names to it, et cetera, et cetera. Keep some anonymity. And so the four that I went through and I did was this. So my first five pieces of data gave me this. I got 80.6 as an average. I got 83 as an average, 79.8 and 78.2. Now, when you plot these, plot it to the nearest number. So I'm going to plot this at 81. I'm going to plot this at 83, 80, 78. Okay. Now, as kids are putting this up, you're going to make the same, you're going to copy this down as well. So there, I've got a room here for that. Now, my, the data that we came up with when we did this looks like this. And this was the point where I forgot to tell them to not worry about trying to find percentages or the decimal points. And so obviously it is a little clustered. Um, but there's 84 dots there. So I had what would be 21 students in class on that day. And you can kind of see where things are kind of falling. So it kind of makes for an interesting thing. And you know, so there's some discussion about what happened here, um, especially given the fact that, if I remember correctly, we only have 155. So there's no way. So this this person just goofed up. And, um, but we got a 66, got two 90s, that type of thing. And so it was some interesting discussion going on from that. So then the next question is, back over here, is what does each dot on the poster represent? It's going to be a random sample of five students and the mean test score of that sample. Okay. So again, very specifically talking about what each one of those points means to drive home the fact that each one of these points on that dot plot is ex an example of what we're getting. Okay. So what do you think the true mean is? Now, interestingly enough, if you go back here, so I usually come back here and you know have kids kind of say it, and they will usually kind of say somewhere in here. So kind of in that 78, 79 range. Okay, that's you know kind of in the middle if you draw the bell curve. That okay, that works there. So anyway, when we come back to here, the actual mean of that data is 79. So you know, if we have 78, 79, you, what we're seeing is relatively close to what we're having. Now, the problem here now becomes this. Is this a sampling distribution? The sample distribution shows the means is calculated from all the possible samples of size 5 in our case. Now, since we only had 70 tests to pull from, the question is how many different ways could you pull a sample of 5 from that? So if we do 70 choose 5, we would have to go through and find 12 million samples of what's going on. Well, that's obnoxious. Um, so obviously we can't do all of that. So what we're going to start setting up here is trying to say how big is good enough? How many samples do we need to make to make this work? Um, because again, da, 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 da. okay. Um, so then down here, and I too quickly for those of you guys who watch Chicago 
where I teach, by the way. Um, I went too fast on this. But for those of you guys who aren't in West Chicago, this will work out perfectly. Um, we took a random sample of five Chapter 6 test scores at West Chicago Community High School and calculated a mean of 68. Is this convincing evidence that the West Chicago students did worse than our school? I know. That is our school for some of us. My deepest apologies. But 68%. Now, check out what's going on here. If we go back to... Okay, so what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to mark 68% out on... Actually, let me do it in a different color. Not something so huge. Shoot. Come on. There we go. So we got 68%. We want numbers. That, so is it typical that we'd be scoring less than that? Well, okay, how many people would score less than that? Well, we had two. We had two out of, I think I said 84, right? And so the question is, is that convincing evidence that the, this sample did worse than the sample that we had above? And so if you come back here, the answer is yes, because 2 out of 84 is a sample of 2.4%. And that's less than our 5% kind of benchmark that we've talked about. And so we would say, yeah, if the, if they had an average, if the average was the same as what we had, this would be very unlikely because we'd only get a 2.4% chance of that actually happening. So we'd say, yeah, that, you know, that's unlikely that the sample mean is actually 68% or lower. If we had the same averages. So then we would say, yeah, they definitely had a lower average base. Otherwise, they, we would not be seeing what we're seeing. And that's what we're setting up for the rest of the unit. All right. Um, go ahead and pop over to part two so we can see the rest of this formalized. And I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.